Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You may be seated. Everyone has an opinion as to whether the sermon they just heard was good or not. Some preachers do, do well, and then other ones don't do so good. If they do it well week after week, they have a good reputation. Some, some folks tell the pastor a nice comment as they leave, as they leave and go out the door, and the pastor will smile and say, thank you for your kind words. Well, one parishioner said to the pastor, Pastor, you surely had a warm sermon today. A week later, the parishioner said the same thing to the pastor. Pastor, you surely had a warm sermon today. And on the third week, you can guess what the parishioner said again. Yes, she said, Pastor, you have a warm sermon today. So the pastor went to the woman and said to her, well, what, does a, what, was that, what is a warm sermon that you have said that I, I, I gave to you each, each week? And the woman said, well, pastor, it wasn't so hot. <laughs> Such critics we find, even in the Bible, as it was a habit on the Sabbath day, Jesus went into a synagogue to to worship and pray, much like we go to into our church every week. One of the titles that Jesus had was Rabbi. He got that title by being a teacher. So we find him giving a discourse to the people. I understand that some is given the privilege to read from the scrolls of the law and the gospel of the law and the prophets. When you go into the synagogue, they take out the scrolls and they open them up and they read it. And then right after that, they usually have some, a discourse on what it means. Well, it happened that Jesus was doing it that day. And in our gospel lesson, we hear, and they went into Capernaum, and immediately on the Sabbath, he entered the synagogue and was preaching. And they were astonished at his teaching. In other words, he was a good preacher. They were astonished at his teaching, for he taught them as one who had authority and not as the scribes. I guess the scribes weren't very good preachers. Jesus was impressive as he taught with authority, it said. I guess he was that way even when he was 12 years old, when his parents took him to the temple for the first time, or actually the, it was a special ritual day, took him at 12 years old, probably like the bar mitzvah of today. He went into the, and, he, and you remember that his parents took him there and as they were on their way home, they thought he, Jesus was probably playing with some of the friends that they came from the community, and they didn't worry about where Jesus was. But finally, they never saw Jesus, so they started going amongst the people and saying, have you seen Jesus? Have you seen Jesus? And when nobody had seen Jesus, they didn't know what to do except to go back into Jerusalem. And they went back into Jerusalem, and who was teaching the priests? But Jesus, at 12 years old. He was discussing some, probably some very good uh, theological discussions and there he was talking about the meaning that was in the Bible regarding probably the Messiah. Jesus was talking about God's word and the priests who were there were in awe of his wisdom of this young boy. Well it happened again that they were in awe of the wisdom that Jesus had in the synagogue. Jesus spoke with authority some people do not speak with authority. They have, even, have you ever heard a pastor or a preacher that, we, uh, that was on the boring side? Any of you ever hear? Well, the people were all in agreement. Well, maybe not everybody. But in their midst, someone wanted to take some attention. Mark notes, and immediately... There was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out. Boy, would that be something that happened in our church, you know? Who brought him to church anyways? Get the ushers. Get the elders. We have had disturbance. We need to take care of this. How would you feel if the disturbance was coming from your family? 
We do not see too many people with an unclean spirit nowadays. In Jesus' day, it was a way to disturb others, and it was contrived by the Satan that would go into people, and these people were just terrible. Sometimes, as you remember, the t- one time the unclean spirit person was, was, had no clothes on, and he was running around in the fields, and, and oh, Jesus had compassion and mercy on that poor person. And what did he do? But he cast out the, the, the evil spirit, and it went into a herd of pigs, and they all jumped into the water and drowned. Well, that was certainly an exciting episode. We don't see those things much today. So it would disturb others. It would take them away from the attention they given to God. And it still happens, however, that there are too many other ways to take their attention away from God. Today you know that some people have an opioid. We hear about the opioid drug abuse. We hear about other addictions. We hear about sexual addictions. And there are so many ways to be drawn away from God. We don't need to have a possession of the devil because the devil's doing just fine as it is, taking all these people away from God because of some, some t- trivial problems on the other side. The poor soul in our gospel, he had no control. He just started calling out. And he said this, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. How interesting. Even an evil spirit knows exactly who Jesus was. He had the wrong idea of why Jesus was there, but that was also part of the devil. Today the devil would prefer that people would not know who Jesus is. And he's doing a good job. There's a whole group of people called called nuns, meaning they have no God nowadays. Even the devil knows who Jesus is, but they do not trust in him for salvation and desire to continue to corrupt and confuse and confine and do all of those things who believe in him. Most of us have seen and know people who do not believe for one reason or another. Just at the nursing home. Here they are, way up in years, 80, 90 years old, and they do not believe in God. Why? They have excuses and they have reasons, but it's actually just as bad as if one person was possessed by the devil because they are no longer giving any glory and following Jesus at all. Most of us have seen and know these people Demon possession is not ended, however, today. The devil has been on his path as trying to get people on the path to hell in so many ways. But you know, some people can tell you a story about demon possession and that they experienced it. I had a couple professors at the seminary that talked about demon possession. One, little, one boy in the, in the uh, confirmation class, can you imagine that confirmation class? There was one person in the confirmation class who always made disruptions. Disrupting, disrupting, and disrupting. Well, one day in that confirmation class, that boy started talking about the pastor and, of the, and it was talking about the tests that he had cheated on in, in the college. Well, how did this boy know about the tests that he had cheated on in the college? He was telling the truth. It would surely cause confusion and and an uproar. Well, it was because of the demon possession. The pastor ran out of that room as fast as he could, and then he came back in, and he proceeded to cast the demon out of that boy. And that boy was never the same. Instead, he was a good boy, a person who learned the word of God and was blessed by being in the church. Today we do find some circumstances like that. I had another friend who had a Bible study in his house. And it was one of those more charismatic Bible studies because he was more charismatic as a pastor. And so at the Bible studies, this one lady would always say, Praise Jesus! Praise Jesus! Praise Jesus! And one problem was that she would be 
interrupting all the time. It was not appreciated. And she was praising Jesus. But one day, her voice changed. And she started talking in that terrible, deep voice, talking about the pastor, telling him what he was doing wrong and what he had done wrong. And he didn't know what to do except what the Bible said. So he went to the side and he took the praise Jesus woman and he said, Woman, what is your name? She says, My name is Jesus. Well, in the name of Jesus, I cast this Jesus out of you. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And there was a convulsion that took place again. And that lady sunk down and became a most beautiful person again. She was finally away from the possession of the devil. Well, I'm glad we don't have to deal with that. But we surely can be concerned about what the devil does to take away the people from Jesus. In the gospel lesson, it continues to say, But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent and come out of him. And the unclean convul spirit convulsed him and cried out with a loud voice and came out of him. You and I still need Jesus today because we still sin. And sometimes we take a path far from following Jesus. Thank God we have the sacraments to help us in our faith. Thank God we have repentance and the forgiveness of sins. Jesus takes us and hears our calls for mercy and forgives us. As we are baptized and called as one of God's own children, just like Freya was called today to be his own child, we are given the Holy Spirit and led day by day to trust in him. Before Jesus was crucified for our sins, he also gave his, mystery, his disciples the mystery of the sacrament of Holy Communion, where we were given the precious body and blood of Jesus. In addition to remembering Jesus, we are also given the forgiveness of sins, we are strengthened by our faith, and we are given a chance to declare the unity that we have with one another by coming up together in faith to receive the body and blood of Christ. Jesus created a wonderful blessing for us in our church. However, the devil is real and desires confusion in our midst. Jesus desires peace and love for him and for others in our midst. He sure left an impression with all who saw him on that day in the synagogue. Our text says, and they were amazed. So they all questioned among themselves saying, what is this? A new teaching with authority? He commands even the unclean spirits and they obey him. And then the Bible goes on, and at once his fame spread everywhere throughout all the surrounding region of Galilee. Well, we come together today to see and hear and experience the very presence of God. Is today an oh hum day? When will the service be over day? When will that time be coming to us? Or is it a day of blessing that we know Jesus is setting his love and spreading his love to each and every one of us here? And he moves us to, to tell others of Jesus and his love. Is that what you want to say? In these few years of Jesus' life, Jesus had great things that happened, which will show the followers the knowledge of God and what had happened in the po power and presence of Jesus that, those three years. The power of the Holy Spirit has come upon us and given us his mercy to proclaim to others. That's what happened today. That what, that's what also happened on Pentecost, and it continues in the church today. There are many pathways that lead to the one way of following Jesus. We see some of the pathways in the ministry of Jesus. We are given many other ways to allow God's love to spread, and where the community will say, see what love comes from that church? Isn't it marvelous? See what love that comes from that individual? Isn't it marvelous? Where does that all come from? 
and we know the answer. Just as Jesus represented his Father to the people around him, so we can represent our faith to the people around us. The joy of the Lord is our strength. In many ways, we let it be known. When we fail or when we fall, Jesus calls to us and we confess and we are renewed and we are reconciled unto the Lord. May we find peace in our Lord. May the sins that we commit be taken away in their place. May the love of God bring our actions and thoughts into presence with God. God has a purpose for us. May we be so impressed that we share that direction with others. A part of a song goes like this. It's called Ancient Words, and I thought it meant, means a lot to, uh, could mean a lot to us. It says, Holy words, long preserved for our walk in this world, they resound with God's own heart. Oh, let the ancient words impart. Words of life, words of hope, give us strength. Help us cope in this world, where'er we roam. Ancient words will guide us home. Ancient words, ever true, changing me and changing you. We have come with open hearts. Oh, let the ancient words impart. Holy words of our faith, handed down to this age, come to us through sacrifice. O oh, heed the faithful words of Christ. Holy words, long preserved, for our walk in this world, they resound with God's own heart. O oh, let the ancient words impart. Words of life, words of hope, give us strength, help us cope. In this world, where'er we roam, ancient words will guide us home. Ancient words, ever true, Changing me, changing you, we have come with open hearts. Oh, let the ancient words impart. The ancient words of Jesus, the ancient words of the prophets, the ancient words of the evangelists, all of those ancient words lead us to Jesus. May we continue to be in Jesus and always be blessed by him. Amen. And now may the peace of God that passes all human understanding may keep us in the true faith unto life everlasting. Amen.